this Watson machine, what the hell is that all about? So Watson machine is, you know, by far the best use of artificial intelligence that we would have seen in our lives. At least that's what I think about it. Obviously, I'm biased being an IBM employee, but here is what it does in a, in a minute. So Watson will take in language, you know, English language as spoken with pun and natural language and jokes and so on. It will take that information and it will find out what is the actual question that's being asked from this, you know, totally conversational style language. It will go against its huge database. It will crunch all this data as in millions of parallel processes will work. It will get information from several different algorithms all working in parallel. It will take these results, find what is the best result. It will determine whether you know it has enough confidence to give that result out. And then it, it gives a single result. So think of it as Google that will come back with an exact answer instead of you know a, a million page hits. So this will be like the next generation or you know like this is 10 times better than or 100 times better than any BI tool that we have available commercially. A comparison with the in-memory world is that what does in-memory do? In-memory returns data in, in quick time. All the data that's sitting inside it in quick time just because it's stored in a certain way technically and because of you know powerful hardware and so on. Watson does all that but will also you know have this tremendous processing power putting data into context which in memory in itself cannot do right in memory still needs a structured query to go against it watson will understand natural language and will find data out of it which i think would you know totally turn around how bi and enterprise search and all these things work it will totally turn around that on its head so so when Vishal seeker tries to convince us that um Hana is going to change the world, then y your reaction to that would be something along the lines, ah, yes, Vishal, but only partly. Is that right? That would be completely correct. Okay. So this machine, I, I, I'm kind of imagining this thing, thing as being like how, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's like the, the Star Trek computer, right? We, we ask some question, why computer, where are we going? And then computer says, you know, uh, an intelligent answer. It will come out of TV and into, into real life. Okay. You know, Hannah to Watson is not a, an apples to apples comparison, but, you know, Watson is way far forward than what Hannah does. Okay, so where is it at at the moment? What are you doing? Are you just playing around with it or...? Oh, with, with Watson, you know, there's a huge big uh, research team at IBM working on that. You know, there's a, an I, um, you know, a, a Twitter account that you could possibly follow to get the latest updates at IBM Watson. Um, at the moment, all they're trying to do is make Watson play this game of Jeopardy on 14th, uh, 14th of February, that is, and prove that, you know, it can beat two top contestants in, in Jeopardy, you know, the, the winningest people ever in Jeopardy will be pitted against Watson in a public national TV match. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> it, it'll, be, it'll be amazing. Watson already had several practice matches and it practically won, you know, most of it. Occasionally, Watson will give nonsensical answers, you know, at least in practice rounds, it seems to have done that. But that's also the beauty of it, right? I mean, it's not like, you know, artificial intelligence will take over the world and, you know, destroy its inventors and so on. So it will you know, do stupid things too. But, you know, it's far superior to anything else that we have seen so far. So, okay, so you're going to get it to do this sort of, I won't say gimmicky. Well, I just did, didn't I? Right, okay. You're going to get it to do this thing on TV, right? But give me, yeah. a, give me a real world example of how you think this might operate because... Um, that's that's what's going to interest business people. Oh yeah, a good example, right? Um, customer service. So um, consider a big big company that does you know several different products, and you know these products have you know uh, a pre-sales, sales support, you know aftermarket, all kinds of information, and there are hundreds of products, right? A, a big company. Somebody um, calls um, um, on a phone, right? If I am calling a help desk. Either the help desk guy can quickly ask a Watson-like system or even Watson can directly take a call, interpret what it is about and find the best possible five answers for this customer service representative or maybe even totally eliminate that customer service representative eventually. It, it's much better than you know what our current scripted CRM world looks like. Okay, okay. That sounds 
pretty darned exciting. When's it actually going to come on stream, do you think, for, um, for, for Enterprise Fire? Um, I don't know the answer to that, and we I, I can find out if there are you know plans for when commercial versions will be available. This is mostly done by researchers at the time that it's not being commercialized. The idea being, you know, once we prove out that it will work in this games context. Mm. So um, just to give a, a quick example, um, many years ago, IBM's Big Blue computer, you know, beat Gary Gaspro in chess. If that was a big achievement, but then chess has a limited number of moves possible, right? It's in the millions, but at least it's it's limited. It can be computed. Here, open-ended questions don't have you know such a restriction. That's what makes Watson such a a powerful and attractive paradigm that it can still come up with answers, even though the number of answers is not limited. Ah, uh, but hang on a minute there, VJ. If memory serves me correctly, um, what was it called? It was called Deep Blue, I think, wasn't it? And um, yeah, and if, if memory serves me correctly, there needed to be a certain amount of human intervention in order for it to end up beating Kasparov. Is, is, is that correct? So human intervention was needed in teaching Deep Blue what to do, and human intervention is needed in teaching Watson what to do. Right. So all these researchers are now busy teaching Watson, you know, what is the best game strategy, you know, going through millions of documents and, and so on. Right? Watson is not connected to Google. It cannot go onto internet and find information. Everything has to be made available within its database. Right. So it doesn't cheat. Ah, right. Okay. Well, it'll be fascinating to see how that one works out then, won't it? Yes, it, it, it should be amazing. You know, it might not be next year when we see it, but, you know, conceptually this is far superior to almost anything I have seen in Enterprise so far. Wow. Okay then, BJ.